Hi, I'm going to give you an overview of a new protocol supported in the MPLAB data visualizer. This is the DV runtime. And what we're going to be showing you today is specifically the implementation of a library in MCC Melody and how this works. We're going to run through some of the use cases in the API reference and give you a sense of what you can do with this wonderful new runtime debugging functionality in the MPLAB ecosystem. Let's get going. So I happen to be using a PIC16F Q71, and we're going to create a new project for this part. Click Next and choose a compiler and give it a name. And we're going to open MCC. and it's going to be a Melody project. Now, you can see there's a lot of optional content here, and those are the libraries from MCC Melody. And because I have used the DB runtime before, it's already there, so I can click Next. And we'll see that the Data Visualizer runtime is available under Device Resources. Now, notice that this is like adding a watch uh, to plot the variable at runtime. And that is very similar to when you are breakpoint debugging and you're able to add a watch and check the value of the variable when you hit a breakpoint. Now well, let's click on the question mark. And this opens the API reference. And um, we're going to be running through the first use case there. And this is what you'll see. So there's a couple of different count variables. And um, are we going to be able to manipulate certain variables, like changing the length of the period that the LED is on? Uh, the minimum project, this is what you'll refer to before you're wanting to use your own variables and plot them. But here, we just start off by plotting one of the internal variables in the DV runtime protocol. So the key thing that you'll need is a USB serial bridge. And you're going to um, program something on the target. And between the target and the computer, you're going to need a, a USB serial bridge, which happens to be on the Curiosity Nano board, which I'm using. So here are some of the other things to look out for as you're configuring different options. and. Um, Basically, you're going to be setting up a pointer table in the target microcontroller, or that's what the data visualizer does. But come and have a look here. It's a very interesting project which runs on the target. For now, I'm going back to the beginning, and I'm going to run the first use case. So here, a LED is toggled after LED period milliseconds. LED on holds the state of a LED pin, meaning that when it is set to zero, an active LED is on and vice versa. Every one millisecond, DVRT process is called via a flag uh, set in the timer callback. So we're going to add a couple of components, DV runtime and a timer. From the dependency selector, well, we have to select a UART by checking the schematics to see what is connected to the USB serial bridge. We're going to add a timer, one millisecond. They're going to use interrupts. We're going to select a pin for our LED and configure it as output. And name the pin LED. Now, the reason we're going to name the pin LED is because we have in our code snippet here, LED underscore toggle. And by naming the pin LED means that the utility functions which we generate um, for the GPIO are going to match up with this code snippet. Then we're going to check that the system clock is fast enough, or rather, we're going to check that the UART board rate is less than a percent and change the system clock if necessary. We um, add some variables to the DV runtime table, and then we'll come back to these code snippets here um, once we've done the MCC configuration. So adding DV runtime to our project and clicking on Reset to Vertical to clean it up a bit. 
we can see what some of the configuration options are here and what we are doing by the hovering over. From the UART component, we select a UART PLIB, and by clicking on that, we can scroll to the bottom, and here we can select our UART PLIB. But we first have to check our schematic, so opening that, we can see that we use UART2, and TX is connected to RB4. So UART2, and TX is connected to RB4, and RX, RB5, so yes, RX, RB5, and our lead pin is on RC7. So RC7, and that's our lead pin. Now we can go to pins and name our pin, uh, LED. Okay. Now let's just check the UART and the board rate error. That's a bit high. So we go to clock control and we're going to bump up this frequency here. So and check our UART board rate. Yes, now that is less than a percent. We are happy with that. Now we are adding a timer. Let's select timer one. Okay, enable the timer. Instead of peripheral pin selection, which is an external clock, let's select F OSC divided by four. And the prescaler, we're gonna make it higher so that we get easier to understand numbers here. Uh, 0.1, so that's one millisecond. And we are going to enable our interrupt on the timer. So that should be the MCC configuration complete, so we can generate code and come into the project and open main. Now, back to our code snippets. Um, the top include here for system is the default for DSPIC and PIC24. Every time we use one of the API, the header file is added automatically. But because we are pasting blocks of code, that doesn't work in that way. So um, those are why that's included. For now, we copy the first code snippet and paste it into our project. Now, you can see as soon as we save, there's an error there, and we go into timer, timer one, and notice that on our timer interface, the instance name, timer one, and it's good practice to reference that, and we'll copy that and replace the instance address to the instance of timer one and now copy our callback function and finally our main. Okay, now you can see that um, this happens to be one of the devices which use, um, well, which have the distinction between high and, and low priority interrupts. We can check that under interrupt manager and here you can see that you are two rx and tx interrupt it are high as well as the timer one interrupt okay so we can change the priority there if needed for now we go back to our project let's clean up a little bit and um, we should be able to program or build our project. So as we build, notice that we have a debug.elf. And for MPLAB 6.10 or newer, you can see that the build for debugging is the default type of build. Let's set a breakpoint and start debugging and check that we can hit our timer callback, which we do. And 
running, we can now open the D data visualizer and open a DVRT session. Here we set the COM port to our board and set the board rate to 115200. And load our symbols. So now under distribution, default, debug, and our debug.elf file. And all good, start running. No news, there's good news here. As we pull our table to the bottom, we've received a ping from the DVRT process. We can add the different variables that we wanted. Now the two lead variables, lead on and lead period milliseconds. Let's give ourselves some more space here and plot all these variables. Now let's just clean this up a little bit, leaving just the process on the top. And the next one we'll plot the uh, milliseconds since last toggle, give it a different color, and add one more plot for the lead on. Okay, so now we can start playing and modifying some of these variables, resetting the process calls, for example. And we can, for example, also change the period of the LED to a second. Immediately, the LED updates. Now, clicking on the DVRT protocol, we can see that we can change a streaming tick, uh, making it 20 milliseconds, and immediately the smoothness of the plots are increased because we are sending frames much more frequently. Now, stop the debug session and program. Programming complete and now we now open default production and production.elf and stop and restart and our variables again are plotted. Now just keep in mind that the symbols, they might be in different places if we are using the production instead of the uh, debug. You can also change something, program the part, and immediately MPLAB X will notify you to reload debug symbols if it detects that the symbols file is out of date. Okay, so this is an overview of the DB runtime and showing you some of the possibilities for this wonderful new runtime debug functionality that's been added to the MPLAB ecosystem. Thank you.